20 pack. Um, so we can you can see we have two different sets of rats. Those one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them on the net. We call that xiang. X I A N G. And those smaller rats, mine's a little bit different from the regular one because I add extra here in order to expand the range. One extra fret. Normally, the model I only have like up to here. So for the traditional pipa, normally range to 20 to 26 frets. But this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 25 of them, those frets. Okay, so 25 plus this, six of them. Okay, so um, they arrange chromatically. They all play separate, like a um, semitone. Mm. And also, you can see they have four strings. I purposely lose them so I can tune them in real time. Okay? So, those strings are attached to here, very similar to guitar or like a cello, um, all the other uh, string instruments. Okay? And also, when we play pipa, the contemporary pipa, we need to use frets because of the string. For the traditional pipa, we use silk as string. It's very soft. But for modern days, in order to adapt for the different theater or like performance or the stage, we need to have like a louder volume of it. And at the same time, we need to like the first string, instead of like use nylon, nylon or using uh, silk, we use metal. So that will potentially damage our nail. So that's why we need to use those kind of fake nails. I didn't put them on so I can pass around so you can take a look. For those fake nail, normally they are built, they are using like um, very hard plastic. So we can pass it along. So for five finger, this is for the right hand. And the shapes are different. Because I try to adapt to my own finger. I actually I made those nail my myself. So when we play, um, how many of you play black instrument? What do you play? Oh, guitar. So uh, for this one, instead of using our muscle, we use this side. So we put nail outside, okay, against our real nail, and then have this tape wrap around. So you can see the thumb is a little bit different. It's like towards this way. So later on when I demonstrate different technique, you can see, okay? So we have to apply all those nails on different fingers. So for pipa, this instrument itself, um, it, it's originally is not a Chinese, Chinese instrument. It originally imported in Persia, from Persia, from Persia, um, during Qing Dynasty, I think it's like roughly 200, 240 some BC, sometimes around that time, and it's imported from Persia, and then highly developed during one of the dynasty, which is like a Tang Dynasty, and then from there, it, um, it in, um imported to different other country. Uh, it got imported from different country, mainly is Korea, uh, Japan, and Vietnam. But for- Why is it still the one this time? Is it the, uh, there are many countries that are- Yeah, because uh, that time, China was like, kind of like, <laughs> it's, 
in the center of Asia. Um, and different countries like uh, Korea and Japan and Vietnam, they have, and also at uh, that time, uh, Vietnam is kind of like, um, it's like a country that's kind of part of China, but not completely belongs to China. So basically they just have this relationship. So like they send their like um, um, kind of ambassador people the, their role to China and just to do some exchange. Mm -hmm. they, bring those. they bring those instruments back. And actually for the Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese version and the Japanese version, they are kind of like a preserve the original pipa. Um, basically the ball is a little bit bigger and like um, relatively shorter and they still use silk string. And also for the frets, they tuned based on the arrange, based on the pentatonic scale. Okay, so basically just a Chinese version, it's kind of like a developing into this like model, so it can fit in different kind of like type, modern type of music is chromatically made. And I don't think people was highly developed in Korea, right? Uh, you know, Korea has their own music highly developed. Also, the pipa is pipa is, yeah. Disappear. Yeah, people is not one of them. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's a brief history of pipa. And for the pipa, this is the soundboard. Okay, the, the instrument itself is made of wood. It has had the thing to tune the instrument itself, the neck, the body, okay, soundboard, and the back is like this. A little bit curved, okay? Curved so it's kind of like a stick with the body. Okay. What kind of wood is it? Uh, mine is kind of like a red wood. It's like umu in Chinese, but I don't know how to say it in English. So this kind of this instrument, my mom had this this master made it for me. So this is kind of about a tuning. There are different kind of tuning, and also I compiled a file. I think I forgot to put that into Google Drive, but I will send that to everybody. So it has a different tuning. So for the tuning, we have A, D, E, A. So on the piano, we don't really have a fixed pitch. We use relative pitch. Mm -hmm. So basically it's using a different use one use one uh, string as a relative to as a relative pitch to tune the rest. And also for this instrument it's a little bit different from probably from the other instrument because like after this like general tuning we don't have those kind of a, like a very refined tuning. So and sometimes if we bend, like you can hear a quarter tone lower, right? So some, sometimes we need to bend a little if we want them to be very close to the tuning. You have to tell the, the musician in advance so we can prepare it. And after this one, we have to bend for a couple of times. You can see it like a little bit even lower compared to those strings. So this is like uh, a little bit smaller than perfect fifth. So we have to redo it. Now 
is good and you have to bend a little bit more because got lowered a little bit more. Now should be good and the second string also have to do the same thing. Like shake around, make sure it's all loose. Got lower a little bit. And if we bend, the sound going down. Getting lower gets lower, it's not goes up. tuning the most common tuning is a d e a um, but for a lot of composers they use different tuning so sometimes in order to create a dissonant sound some composer like sharp the third string which is the d string make a d sharp so we got a, like a per augmented fourth and a minor second in the middle and another perfect fourth on five okay so far, any question? If I go too fast, please let me know. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is a basic tuning and like some like minor tuning, minor change. And also some composer also change to other tuning. Like for example, so what I can, what I suggest is each string, okay, each string, you can, if you want to tune up, I wouldn't recommend tune up a major second, okay? Minor second, if you tune up, that's probably the maximum because it increased the tense, tense of the string and it's easily break. And I broke a couple of strings. Like last year in one of the concerts with uh, Carlton, it's like the um, hip hop, hip hop concert, I play hip hop. And one of the string got broken, the second string got broken on the stage. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't recommend tune up too much. Just minor second is a maximum. If you want to tune down, then I wouldn't recommend a minor third above. So minor third should be the largest one. Otherwise the string will just get too loose. And then when you press down, it's kind of like much less intense. Like basically it sounds loose. So mm -hmm. there are not much tuning opportunity for the string. And also when, if you want to use special tuning, um, uh, for example, if you want to write a, if you write an A two this time, and you want to use special tuning, please let me know in advance because every time the tuning different is different, so the frets all sounds different. So I have to adjust my finger. Okay, so that's something you have to be considered about. The two just to have the uh, uh, whatever the, the traditional tuning, we can get to know first. Yeah. And then try out. Yeah, and then try out. The best way is like knowing the basic technique, right. the basic tuning itself before work on the other tuning. Yeah. Okay. Out of curiosity, when there is different tunings, do you, is it written in score to tour if it's written in like Western notation, or is it written as sounding pitch? As sounding pitch. As sounding pitch. Okay. Sounding pitch. okay. Mm. But uh, it really depends on what kind of score system are you going to use. Right. If you use a regular, like a Western score system, then just sounding pitch. Mm -hmm. But if you use Chinese score system, then it's different. Because for a lot of Chinese musicians, they don't read Western notation. They don't mm -hmm. read clap that well. Even the well-trained one, they intend just enjoy reading this type of music. So today, um, before I introduce the techniques, basic techniques, uh, I also want to introduce like, I already sent out this handout, like a very simplified, like very general idea of like a, how the simplified Chinese notation, which is number notation works. And I will go in detail, um, but that's a tuning first, okay? For the Chinese tuning it's, uh, itself, it's, it's kind of like, we use transposed score sometimes. So very similar to the idea of like 
clarinet. Yeah. So you look at the notes, you like it indicate as that note, but it sounds differently mm -hmm. if you have perfect pitch. Okay. All right. Now we can talk about the range. Okay. Is it this uh, this can it really depends on the system. If we read uh, if we read like a Western notation, then it's not transposed. It's not transposed. But if we read in Chinese, like simplified notation, then it is transposed. Yeah, yeah. So for example, the open string apparently has to be the lowest note unless you want to tune it. So it's A two. Okay. So for the mo for most of the um, pipa, modern pipa, the highest note is E. Okay, so this one is an E5 on the piano. And because I added extra frets, can reach to this F. Okay, but this F wouldn't sound very nice because I just wrote one piece. I have to use a regular F. I can't just use bending. Okay, so that's why I add this. But you can see the space is very little, so I can't solidly press in it. So all the way up to, if you write music, you can all the way write up to five, uh, F. But also, I can bend a little bit in order to reach a higher pitch. Okay, so I would write, recommend if you write like a more than uh, G4. Okay. Otherwise, it would be difficult. E five or high. Uh, uh, G G five. G five. Okay. All right. So far, any question? Okay. Good. Let's talk about basic techniques. Uh, do you have the printout? No. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, all right, okay. So, it's okay, it's okay. I, I will compile another, I'll compile another uh, technique. But I think the most important thing is, have you know what the possibilities and what it will sound like, okay? So, um, this is open string. We can do a lot of things on the open string. And first, I want to introduce this right hand technique. Because for people, we have right hand and left hand two techniques, okay? So uh, today, mainly, I want to introduce some very basic techniques. So first, I want to introduce this two finger technique, which is like over thumb and index finger, okay? So pipa, the sound is produced by plugging the string, okay? So we have one technique, it's called tan, basically it's like use finger one to press out, okay? To plug the instrument. This is a very basic technique. And another one as combination is using the thumb coming back, okay? So if I write on the board, then it's this one. I think it's all. Actually, I don't really need. Um, I don't need uh, presentation. I can just write on the board. I think that would be easier. Yeah. Okay. This one, this symbol, is the first finger. Okay, this one. And this symbol is coming back to the thumb. Okay? So when we play, you can do either one, the single strike or the combination. And also you can adjust the speed as well. Okay? We can do very slowly. And increase gradually increase the speed, and eventually reach to tremolo. So basically, very fast. Okay. So if you 
if you want to do tremolo, then you need to combine both of them together and have some dull afterward. So I know you want to do tremolo. But if you just want single strike, like using the index finger, just use this part. If you just want to use the thumb, then use this part. Okay. So this is a very basic two finger technique. So for um, for pipa, this instrument is not just like you can only play one string. You can play different strings, like uh, multiple strings. So then interval and chord will be be produced. Okay. So for example, two string, still same technique. Use one finger, press two, uh, grab two string at the same time. And then the same way you can come back. Okay. And also same way we can increase the speed. Eventually reach to a tremolo, okay? And if we, we press or down left hand. different like interval okay so if you want to do two strings if you want to do two strings then use this technique use this symbol just two flat okay this is for th uh, for for index finger and coming back is for thumb and same thing if you want to do tremolo just put those two together Put those two together and some dots afterward. Okay? Yeah, so I will just score both two and three. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. It's okay. Those are for them to read, like just beforehand. So I can Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will write down on the board and explain it. So this is in your metro three and three now? Yeah. That's yeah. in the toy if I could. Oh, yeah. Does it make sense? Okay, so this is for single note, and this is for intervals, okay, three notes. And also at the same time, we can play chords, three notes above, okay? So, for three notes above, basically it's just like strike, okay? Same thing, it's two fingers, good enough. And also at the same time, we can change the speed. Okay? And you can change to a different chord. Okay? Alright. So for this notation, for if you want three strings, okay, you use one, two, three. One, two, three. Like this. Can you all see it? So three little short line with a middle, like a longer line connect them, and this is for thumb, uh, for index finger. This is for thumb. Okay, and same rule apply if you want to do tremolo. Just dot afterward. This is for three strings, and if you want to do four strings, just add one more line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And same thing. One, two, three, four. One. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay, good. All right, so this is basic left hand um, two finger, basic left hand two finger technique. And also, we also have like a three finger, four finger technique, but that's not the very commonly use, like, used at this moment. I just want to introduce the basic one at this moment. And the second basic, um, the basic right hand uh, one um, technique is uh, five finger pattern, regular tremolo, okay? 
start from index finger, okay? And then middle finger, ring finger, pinky, and thumb. This is the order. Once, this one. This is the order. Five finger technique. You can control the feet. I would recommend just one string or two string, okay? Or unless you just want to play like something doesn't really indicate the notes that clearly. So for this five finger technique, for the five finger technique, you just draw five knots. I'm trying to make this, I'm trying to draw this on my, on my, on my presentation, but somehow it just like, it doesn't have those symbols, so I think I draw my hand would be easier. So this is one, two, three, four, five, five finger technique, okay? So this is single five finger trimble. Single one, if you just write one here, what I know is I'm just going to do this. That's it. That's it. If you want continuously going, then add all those dots afterwards. Okay? And also, this is just for one string. If you decide to use two strings, okay, then combine this one with this one, okay? So basically, just add two lines in front, so I know you want two strings. Or, or if you don't want to indicate that clear, because because mm, for me, I, I play pipa first before I start become composing. So I intend just write everything, like all the detailed notation very clearly, so musician won't get confused, especially traditional pipa player. But if, for example, if you want to use modern notation, mm -hmm. you just write on those two notes. And then I know what you want, okay? All right, okay. So this is basic right hand technique, okay? So far, any question? Do they have finger numbers? Like one, two, three, four, five? Or do oh, we not need to worry no, about no, that? You, you, don't, you don't need to worry about okay. that. Because every time when we play, we have to play in order. We can't just start from random finger and then reverse it. That will just require some technique. Uh, for modern composer, not, not a composer, he's a very famous um, pipa player. His name is Liu Lenhai. Actually, he's my master when I was in at school. So for him, he wrote a piece. It's called Fan Lun, basically reversed tremolo. So, but only four finger, something like that. I I don't know what the point of like. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for virtuosity purpose. But I just don't see any difference. So if you just like write down like that by default, just like one, two, three, uh, this consider as finger one in pipa. Okay, it's not this one. Finger one, two, three, four, and thumb extra. Okay. If you want to use just this one, it's a little bit different. The sound actually for this one, and also I use up. Okay, there's another thing I want to mention. That's why I made this frets different, like uh, those like big finger uh, picks differently. Next time I can bring a different set of picks because different picks can produce different sound. The pick I brought today is like it's kind of generally used because I want to demonstrate two types of music. So this one basically one pick fit all. 
So and there's another set of picks I made. It's very sharp. So for this very sharp one, so like you have much less space to touch the string. So it's very unlikely to create lots of noise. So listen to this. Can you hear the slightly a little bit noise? The first finger probably, or first three probably not. So a slightly a little bit noise. For pipa music, especially for the traditional one, it's very delicate with the sound itself. So for this slightly little pick noise, we consider that as not pleasant for the very quiet, very peaceful music. So for those ones, um, and also um, when we play, uh, for the, sh the sharper it is, and the sharper the sound will be, because much less space. And also we can use different size to play on the string, like for example this one. This one is kind of sharp, right? Okay, and listen to this one. Muscle, mu like a little bit warmer and with a little bit nail sound, right? And if you hear this way, even more, right? So if you play the regular piano, it can be produce a little bit like sharper sound, very clear. But if you do this one, you can see I kind of like slightly adjust my hand. So I'm basically using all the sides. So the sound will sound like a little bit softer, a little bit more gentle, and they will have more the nail sound noise. Like. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. All right. So this is basic writing technique. Two finger tremolo, five finger tremolo. So far, any question? Okay, so next one, I want to introduce um, maybe just briefly left hand, okay? Left hand for most of the pieces, just basically just pressing down in order to produce certain sound. Also, for pipa music, it's very commonly used, like the bending technique is very commonly used, okay? So, for example, this is open string, okay? Open string, and if you go to the first fret, you get this A sharp, and chromatically it goes down. Next one, the same with D, D sharp. Okay? All right, so for... When you press the press, does it make a, a sound? Yeah, it makes no. sound. It, it could make some sound. Or if you don't want any sound, I, I don't necessarily need to make sound. Yeah. I don't need to make sound. Yeah. yeah. Here's what you did here. <laughs> yeah, that one with a little glaze. Because I'm not re releasing it. I'm pressing down, like just go down. Something like this. If you want glee, I can do that as well. But if you just want single notes, either can use one finger or five finger going down. Or you can just like just play scale the same way. So we don't necessarily need to have the sound. But for this instrument itself, if we press down, naturally we'll have some sound when we press onto the frets. It's kind of like a string um, attached to the, um, like attack the frets. And meanwhile, like when the hand movement will also create certain sound. So it's not that pure. But I just imagine for like, a, for regular performance is fine, but this kind of sound can bring out a lot when you go to the recording session. So like when your hand press down, on the frets, it creates certain noise. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, when you press down the frets, later on you all can try it out. Uh, yeah. 
So when you press down the frets, you don't press down in the middle of it. Because first, it's difficult to control. Secondly, it's like the sound is not as solid. It's not solid. So when you press down, you normally just press slightly above the frets. But you don't want to press on the frets. Because if you press on the frets, exactly on the frets, it sounds like. But some people likes it. <laughs> yeah. Some people wants to have this like not very clear sound or it's kind of like covered with some like material or something. But the most common way is right above the frets, but you don't need to indicate that. Okay, so this is a very basic like a pressing down technique. Okay, so when you press down, um, it's not only pressing down one note, you can press down four notes at the same time. For example, this one. You can just play four notes together, or if you want to change different notes. But I wouldn't recommend if you want to write a chord, uh, if you want to write four notes, please give me an open string. Okay, otherwise, you can see my thumb has to go behind here in order to support the instrument itself. So I will run out a finger and then if you constantly switching notes, switching chords, so the fingering will be very difficult. So basically I have to use all five fingers and it's different difficult to control. So if you can give me an open string, just like a first three steps, then it sounds better, right? And can use this, like take advantage of open string, bring more harmonics out. So if you want to write chord, the maximum, for me, for me, probably other people want to do more. For me, three string is, is the best. And give me an open string would be good. Okay. So since we're talking about string, Let's talk about how to notate the string, okay? So we have four strings, it's different like writing for piano and also for cello, for violin, the same thing. You probably just want certain sounds, so you just indicate which string you want to write for. But for people, the same way. We have exactly the same notes. This is um, E, right? This is another E. Okay? Those two E's, they are exactly the same, okay? They're all E4, but the thing is, um, this E4 sounds much brighter because of the mechanic of this the string itself. I use metal string, okay? So it has the metal sound, it's very bright. And this inner string sounds much lower, right? Much, it's, it's not lower, it's like, sounds more Muffled? Warm. Warm. Yeah, those kind of sounds. And this one, exactly same notes, but on the fourth string, it's like, sounds like even more like kind of inside. It really depends on which note, what sound do you want to produce to choose the string. And if you want to choose string, you have to indicate it. Otherwise, I will just pick the one I like the most, <laughs> or I feel more comfortable with. Okay, so for the string, the first string is just one. Second string, two. Third string, three. Fourth string is just like a cross. Or some people like to use four. This is a Chinese four. But give me this, the cross is good enough. <laughs> okay, so those are the strings that you have you have to press down the note. If you want to indicate open string, just add a parenthesis outside. So this is open string one, open string two, open string three, and open string four. Just add a parenthesis. For example, For this interval, if you want to write for this interval, this A has to be open string. So I already know. Because um, you can't.
can really get this one. So what I can write is like for this E. Um, this E, you have two options. Remember our thing, uh, our tune is A, B, E, A, right? No, actually you don't really have option. Okay, you do, you do have to press down. So this one you can either, if you want first string, uh, and this one you want fifth string. So you can combine those together. First string is pressed down, and the last string is parenthesis. This is open string. But if you, if you want to use a second string, then use two. So I know. Yeah, it's yeah. If you want to do the this one, so that's why I use this example. This one only two notes, so much easier for me. Um, so I can do some technique like this. This is another two finger boom pattern. When we go to repertoire, I will explain one by one. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just very give you too many information and uh, too much information later you won't be able to link them so this one i can just skip or finger two or string two and string four i can do this separate them but the thing is this only work for th uh, two notes for two actually three notes i can also do it like basically just add one more finger so there are lots of um, like possibilities that I want to, I can achieve. So, yeah, adjacent string of course is really good. Uh, adjacent string basically if you want chord, four notes together, and then that's so basically adjacent by default. Make sense? Okay. So that's the basic tuning, um, left hand, right hand technique, and um, how to indicate the, the strings. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, so just I want to clarify because you can do non-adjacent strings by adding a finger, uh -huh. but if you have, if you use the two bottom strings and then the top string. Can you still do that? I can still do that. Ah, okay. So oh, basically... Just, oh, because you're using the thumb to string. Thumb, okay, do okay. both string. Okay, and one note, do one string. It's not typical. Uh -huh. It's not typical for, for traditional musicians. They probably wouldn't really do this. Uh, for the, you, you won't really see much in traditional repertoire, though. But for contemporary musicians, we can do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. And also because of this instrument is like a plugging instrument, so we can control our finger, we can use our finger, so it's like we kind of like break the limitation of using both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any questions so far? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we can keep talking. Now, we finished this like a regular, like a, the basic pressing down technique. And now we can do the bending. So for the bending in Chinese notation, we notate either this way or this way. Okay? So this is afterward bending. This is beforeward bending. Okay. So for the first bending is we press down a single note, okay? We press down a single note, and then bend. This is a minor third. So, still, I wouldn't recommend you bend. You ask me to bend like a perfect fourth or a fifth. That's that's impossible, okay? So. So maximum I can bend at this moment is major third. Okay, so otherwise I may break the string. Okay, so this is before, before like this is beforehand, uh, after, afterward. Attack first, and then go to the note. 
and then the second one is I bend first and then come back. Okay. So bend to the like arrival note and then go back to the original note. Okay. So, um, yeah. Yeah. How hard is it to find the pitch if you bend that way? Where, where you bend the note before plucking it, how do you find the pitch? I can feel it. Okay. Yeah, I can feel it. You just, just need to send me the score in advance right. so I can feel where my finger goes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you write that in Western notation? Do you have to write two notes? In two notes? Uh, yeah. For example, if you start from G, okay, and you want to bend to B flat. So something like that. If you don't give me an indicate note, then I, I will just improvise mm -hmm. and bend to whatever note that I want to, or the most convenient one. Okay? Oh, no, 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 that's this one. Oh, actually, if you use Western notation, you can either use this one or this one. Because it doesn't matter, because you have this note bent up. Or mm. you can just use Western notation and just do this one. Mm. But this one, I may get confused. I may glaze up to there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So if you give me a bend, that will be very mm. useful. And if you want the notes beforehand, Then I know. Can I go like both way? Up, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go both way, but uh, yeah, you can do this way. But the departure note has to give me the same one. Or, or uh, the departure note can be like the next bending note, like has to be higher than the departure note because I can only bend up, I can bend down if I start from a certain note. So for the certain note, the departure note is very important. So if you want me to bend, can only above that note, cannot go down from that note. So give me a, just like a note that I know which frets I should press down. But you always would go back and forth, or you can stay on the note you reached. I can stay. Hmm. I can still go back to where. Okay. I can stay for a while. Okay. But the thing is, if you want to. From this note, if you want me to change frets to another note, I, I do have to come back in order to right. press another one. Yeah, I can't just leave it. You can see here. You have to give me a little time to come back and then right. switch note. Um, I can switch, but won't be that clear. Yeah. yeah. That's a bending. Okay. And also, the lower... It's a little bit different, probably different from other plug instrument, like for, for bending technique itself. So for this range, and also actually I can give you a chart about like which range it's best for bending can reach the maximum note. So for the middle range, so for the frets, basically start from the first fret to this fret. So it's to this A, D, E, A, to those, this range, it can bend very well, and also for the first string, it can bend better, but if you go very low here, basically, I can bend a minor second, if go to, okay, mm. second would be very difficult to bend, because the limit is spot, limit in space, right here okay and the strings like a very intense up here and down here 
So for the lower part of the higher notes, basically you can't really hear the bending that much. Because the mechanic of the instrument itself, this part, just the sound doesn't sustain that well. So for a lot of musicians, like especially people traditional player, when they write this part. So more like a fast beat one. Because like the frets here are much smaller, so we can play a little bit faster, but for the bending won't really work that well. Just slide a little bit. But here because One plug back, bend, bend back and forth. Yeah. Vibrato, yeah. Okay. Vibrato, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so the, talking about vibrato, we have different vibrato. For the vibrato, actually, I borrowed from cello ones. Like, actually, we don't have this one in like regular, this vibrato in regular pipa performance technique. But I just borrow from channel because it sounds really good. So basically, you use the entire arm because for the vibrato for pipa, normally it's just like called this only finger bend back and forth, or it's very tiny. You can't hear that much. So I want to find a combination. So I did this one and can be faster. So this is the vibrato that I like. It's kind of like a very, it's subtle, but it still has this kind of like unstable sound. Um, vibrato, you don't really need to indicate, or if you want to, um, for this kind of vibrato, you don't really need to indicate. I intend just do a little bit. So for your etude, if you don't like the way I play, then you can just tell me no vibrato at all. Okay, but if you give me a single note, I intend just do a little bit, okay? And if you really want vibrato, just this one. And for the vibrato, you can do faster speed or slower. or very wild <laughs> and then go to slow or slow go wild okay so for that one you can either use lesser notation for example this one or live or for the tra traditional chinese one can i use some of those On this note, you can just draw this thing. This diamond shape, diamond shape, shape, like this thing. This we also consider that as vibrato. Is that a specific kind of vibrato, or is it just up to player's discretion for what it's, to use that specific note? It really depends on like um, for this type of vibrato. By default, when we play this one but if you want to be very specific you have to indicate slow to fast or fast to slow or if you want to just indicate it like a minor vibrato yeah but for vibrato this thing okay either one okay either this one okay for both this one or this one try not to use in fast Speed. Okay, because I cannot do doing that as well. Can can I can't do like so fast. Meanwhile, vibrato basically like a left hand just like this. Okay, so vibrato can like uh, accompanied by the single stroke or tremolo. 
or the five finger trim roll. Okay, and I can do on all the fingers. So, yeah. And also, if you want me to use specific finger, you can indicate the fingering as well. But if you don't specific indicate it, I will just use my most comfortable finger. Okay. All right. So that's a vibrato. Um, any question about that? So, so you do indicate the length of that with the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can do that. So, for example, if you want very, if you want very slow one, and. Very slow, or if you want very fast but strong, like like that. I, I would understand. Yeah, and also if you have questions, you can email me. And also sometimes, sometimes it's better just give me um, give me um, um, an introduction, like indication of the uh, technique that mm -hmm. you want to With use. That can, yeah, yeah, idea like suggestion. So I can I can study that. Okay, so that's the, those are the very basic left hand and right hand techniques. We so far any question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have the same one. Yeah, uh -huh. this time, including including <laughs> transposing. That could be tricky. one dot on top, okay? So if you have a dot on top, which means one octave higher, okay? So for example, by default, this C is this one, okay? So if we go one octave higher, still one, but we add one dot on top. If we go another octave higher, two dots on top, okay? So the more octave higher, so more octave higher, so more, uh, um, uh, high, the higher the, the more dots, okay? So the, the same way, if we go lower, so this C right here, okay? So this um, metal C, we don't have any dot. So the lower C, we just add dot underneath. And if we want another octave lower, another dot underneath. Okay. So this is the basic note. And then we can talk about rhythm. Rhythm is also very simple. So for example, if we have this G here, it's a quarter note. And then we just write five here. It's fifth scale degree. Well, I'm, I'm just by default working on C major. And you just write a number here. You don't need to add anything. But if you want a half note here, okay? So beside this G, you want to prolong it a little bit by adding a line 
afterward. One, two, beat one, beat two. Just add another line. If you change this one to a dotted half note, just add another line. Okay? Sounds all right. Okay. So if you want the whole note, add three more lines. One, two, three, four. Four counts. One, two, three, four. Okay? So this is going longer. But if we want to go shorter, for example, eighth note. So both of them, both of them are G's, right? You have to write two G's here. And instead of like having this line on top, you have a line, you add a line underneath. Okay? So that's one and okay. So yeah, two eighth notes here. If one eighth note, you just use one. 16th note, same thing. You have two lines on top and two lines underneath. Okay. And if you want to use dotted note, Dot afterward okay because G is a quarter note okay plus a dot afterward and then plus an eighth note which is that one and line underneath you want dotted eighth note two G's a dot in the middle eighth note plus this one so you don't need to use Chinese simplified notation. Just music. At this moment, I just want to explain some examples to you so you understand. Okay. Any questions so far? No questions. Clear. Okay. musicians, traditional ones, they prefer to use D, D scale, D major, okay, D scale. So, so that is more like the transpose score. So for a lot of people musicians, they, we have this tuning here. Take a look at the score that I give to you. Oh, no, no, that, that's too difficult. No, no, no. This one. You are this one. Takes a long time. I have a for it. Yes, yes, single page. Yes, single page. Yes, that one. Yes, one equals to D. So this one equals to D means we are in D major. How many of you have perfect pitch? Okay, that's good. Otherwise, you'll be very disturbed when I play this one. Okay, so Y equals D. So basically, C equals to D. So the C actually sounds like D. So on the music, it shows 
The first note is a G, right? Mm -hmm. So actually on the piano it sounds like an A. So you just split everything a major second up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And now you can keep it. Right, good. Ah, very nice. Good. Any questions so far? Should we, should we go to the repertoire then? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think for this one, maybe we should sit in a circle so I can, um, I can tell you like why the notation is notated that way and what the technique is. If you are interested in any technique, can let me know and take some notes so we can work on that. How about that? Okay. C major, mm -hmm. so there's no transposing required. So um, time signature, exactly same thing. And also another thing for the pipa music is, for it's not just for pipa music, for any solo instrument in almost any solo instrument in China, basically, yeah, lots of improvisation elements in there and interpretation. So it's, for, for me, when I play the song, Every time I play differences. So the, the lens, sometimes the technique, and sometimes the dynamic, I play differently. Okay, would you like to listen to this song first? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one covered all the basic technique we've been talking about and a combination of different techniques. Three, what is it? Three. Huh? No, very fast movement. 
Okay. Oh, no, and, that's and C. We, right? No, no, no. The on top of the six, second six. So uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. The left handed six, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. So this is a left hand kind of pit. Okay. So it's kind of we call in Chinese words like, right? So basically, you use your muscle to lift at your lift at the notes. The reason I want we want that technique is we want those two A's sounds differently mm -hmm. and the second A is an open string so we can use that one so mm -hmm. okay second string is kind of like the second one is a little bit like a softer and lower and this one normally okay so for this one the important part have to be indicated like so for example this one if we press down using the third finger, a second finger in Chinese, like in pipa. So for pipa, this is finger one, two, three, four. Thumb doesn't count, okay? So if you have your finger two pressed up, you can only use finger two to lift that string. Same finger, okay? So that won't create any gap. But if you want to use other finger, so there will be some gap will have a stop sound. So this is just like basic for open string. And also, you don't necessarily need to use open string. You can have like, for example, for, oh, another one for people like pressing down technique is very important is like for this one, if you want to doing this, do this technique, you can only go lower, you can't go higher because the other finger not pressing down. So this is the second left hand, hand technique. Instead of using frets, you use muscle to create a little bit softer sound, more gentle sound. Okay, good. The dot on the six, the little dot in mm -hmm. Oh, that little dot underneath? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's me, one octave lower. Oh, that was... That was that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the notation. If you have dot on top, then mm -hmm. one octave higher, mm -hmm. and one like a dot underneath, one octave lower. Yeah. <laughs> so for the second measure, you can see that thing mm, goes up, mm -hmm. still on that six. So that's the bending technique. Mm -hmm. So this one, they didn't give us any indication of which note to bend, but based on our uh, for pentatonic scale, especially uh, for the pentatonic scale, it's very common that we have major second plus a minor third. So minor third as a bending one, or major second as a bending one, we prefer to have. So if without any indication, I will just bend a third up, or approximately third, okay? Okay, another one. Another technique, you can see on this G on top, instead of five dots right there, that one only has four dots. So basically only use four fingers, one, two, three, four, okay? So the reason using that one is to combine with the next note, it's on that three, which is second string, okay? Because when we do this technique, when we do this tremolo technique, especially we switch string. So the first, normally it's a regular technique regular tremolo and then thumb give to the second string so basically it's right here okay so we don't do because if we finish if we finish the entire circle we'll have some break but this one's it's kind of like connect very smoothly so you don't necessarily need to use the entire circle of this five, five finger, you can just like either four finger, or if you want three fingers, okay, or two fingers. So basically the more finger you use, the longer I can sustain. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you have a sharp four, is that an F sharp on the second line? Yeah, that's an F sharp. Okay. Sharp the same, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, all right. And also this one, you can see everything is notated for the strings. And the next one, one, two, three, the third measure on A, another this, this note again, this technique again, yeah. So if you want to create it, sound like a little softer sound, and meanwhile have like 
more texture to integrate. You can just use this one, this technique, using muscle. Okay. And also, we can just keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth measure, where we have this one comes up. So this actually is two finger technique. So this one is different, different from the one I wrote, but this is kind of like a tremolo. This indicates, this gives us like a different options. Either, when we see this, either we can do two finger tremolo or five finger tremolo. This one. We can do five finger tremolo or a two finger tremolo or five finger. But for the five finger tremolo, I wouldn't recommend you use too much on the inner string. Because for five finger, you can see I have to fully stretch out my finger in order to reach the full dy dynamic. If we, I want to, if you want me to do inner voice, I can do it as well, okay? But I have to control each finger very clear, carefully, not touching other strings, and I can play very loudly. But four strings, okay, uh, again. Because I have more space on this side, I can scoot, uh, scoot back. So for the inner string tremolo, it's better just to use two finger tremolo. So when I see this, I just give my choice, give myself a choice, like doing two finger, okay? And the next measure, this is C and D. Okay, this D, you can hear, you can see only one note with C indicate, but I play two notes. I play the interval D and D, an octave below our D. So, so that's why I added those like thing, right, like an interval thing, use finger one. Um, that was basically for my own entertainment. I, I, I like the sound. So that's why I added there. So is this measure seven you're talking about, or six? Seven. Seven, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an octave below, not the unit for any part. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. And the next uh, line, so like uh, if you want to add sharp or flat, you can add them. You can, as long as I, as long as I can reach, okay? And then there's like five finger trim with those dots. So basically the whole thing. So which means when you I do tremolo, I can change notes. I can tremolo while changing notes. So you can just like one tremolo with different notes. Okay. All right. So uh, second line, third measure. There's another two finger technique. That's a technique that I demonstrated earlier before. Basically interval non-json uh, non string or json string in this case it was a json string so basically you have uh, you have this like um e octave huh? is it e octave e, lower octave e and plus the e, the lower octave e plus the lower octave, octave. like e plus yeah. the lower uh -huh. Uh -huh. so but there's a sharp oh no it's open string open yeah. second string so there are two fingers right there. So this is indicating that technique. So basically, this one is finger one, uh, like index finger. This one is thumb. Okay, it's kind of like a opposite from this one. This one is like thing like. But this one, this technique itself, both of them have to be combined. Otherwise, I will get confused. Have to be combined. Basically, finger. Um, so basically, index finger and thumb has to play at the same time. Okay, so that can produce interval. And I can play either a Jason string or not a Jason string. In this case, it's finger one and two, uh, string one and two. So they are together. They are together. Okay, but I can do finger one, uh, string one and string three as, as well and string one, string four. And the next string not necessarily need to be open string. I can press different notes. Okay. 
That's another technique you can work on, uh, you can use. And then, um, not too, okay. So for the third line, one, two, three, the third line, first measure, okay? So um, another, that's technique, left hand. Okay, so basically for this one, I have my finger one pressed down and use finger two to plug it, okay? So in order to create a different sound, okay? And then keep going. That A and A octave is like that technique again, open string. And then next one. So the next one. So after this A and A, the next the tremolo one. This one very similar to the first one. Okay, very similar to the one that we talk about this technique. But this one is not using our right hand. Okay, so it's the thumb use the muscle muscle to plug a string. Um, that's okay. So that one was mainly because this one is right before that tremolo. So that's why I just like, and also for me, I feel more comfortable to use that one. But also if you want to use left hand, you can also use your left hand. But this one, it's really about the texture. Because if you just want to use your uh, right left hand, so basically just the muscle sound. But if I use this part, so basically I can use both muscle and the pick, so it produces this sound. My question was mm -hmm. that what uh, the kind of notation indicates that you can do with the right hand? Mm, for this one, maybe you have to write it on it. So like which hand you want to use for this plus. This performance yeah, mm -hmm. this is performer's um, decision. Mm -hmm. For me, I prefer to use right hand so I can produce like a little bit softer sound but has texture by using a little bit of the fret the, the my nail yeah okay uh, so okay um there's nothing new another new information is second to the last measure on the third line so uh, is like five three five The next one. So the last G we have like that symbol. That symbol which means we press down the note without left right hand. So we we play the note without left hand. So basically right hand. Basically left hand press down very hard. Oh hammer on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nothing special. Okay, and then keep, keep going. One, two, three, four. The fourth line, the third measure, the last E. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. The first E, you can see there's like a vibrato. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. by default vibrato. Finger one, uh, finger five, uh, four on this E. Okay, the last E, you can see there's still like a little bit wave, which means a little, mm -hmm. yeah, which means a little bit softer one. Different sound. 